Uh, okay, I thought I'd make a little video for you lads on the forum just to whet, whet your appetites a little bit. This C Sin CMC, I'll go through it from the beginning, so installing it. So uh, it downloads as a zip. You see there, I've just extracted it to my desktop. Just a straightforward installer, really. Don't take more than a few minutes. Basically, just accept all defaults, really. Unless you've got some special place you want to put it. Uh, we'll click them, we'll have them. Get the usual boxes coming up. Like you say, don't take long to install. At the minute, I've just got it connected to an IPM satellite bench. Nothing connected to it at all. Uh, I did try to connect it to my the IPS that's on my own machine, but it wouldn't update the firmware for some reason. But that said, it's a uh, one of the first IPS's that came out, so I've got a feeling that's probably what the issue is. I'm actually in contact with CS Labs, and we're going to be looking at it, uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm also going to try it on a on an IPA which I've got, which is uh, from where there, look, Saturn corner. Anybody who was interested, that's an Acorn board. And that's an Acorn screen. I'm not going to get into that yet. I'll save that for another day. Anyway, back to this. So it's it's uh, installed, it's finished. It gives you the option to run the, run the software SimCNC or run the, up, the uploader. Now... If you're installing this, you've got to update the firmware on your controller to the latest version, which is something like 3.009, uh, and you need the latest uploader, which is version 3.9, I believe. So you would probably just select this run option to do that. Uh, but I won't do that. I'll show you how you get it if, for whatever reason, you don't want to do that. This is more for people who've never done it before, I suppose. You basically, when it installs, it will install a folder. Now, for some reason, it calls it IP version 3 Mac 4. That's because I think it's the Mac 4 loader that they're using. So, basically, go in there, find it. And this is the, the loader. It also creates another thing called maintenance. I'll click that and show you. When that loads up, it's just so you can update or remove components. I'll remove it all. So, that's that. So, uh, it also puts a shortcut there to the, to the firmware uploader. So, I'm going to double click on that. And you get this box appears and uh, it just sits there now you've got to click on start to go any further when you click on start it asks you which firmware you want to load now in this case i want oh, i want the m click on open when it does that it sets off looking for the device for your controller you see there it flashes a message up Boom, again, we in a second or two it's done it. Right, and you can see it's showing that controller that I've got connected up there. Click OK. Once it's done that, you'll get a box pierce telling you that it's going to switch to bolt loader and be a little bit patient. Click OK. And off it goes. And you can see there, it's... Uh, updating firmware now obviously I've done this before so it's just overwriting the existing one 
Now some people are not aware that you can put older versions of firmware back on if you want as well. I had someone email me asking me that just the other day. If, the, if they installed this, could they go back? And yeah, you can. You just go get the older version of the firmware and upload it just the same way as you're doing this. It's not a problem. Quite, quite a big firmware update. This usually it don't take this long. This is, uh, it must be doing quite a few, uh, quite a bit more. Whatever it's doing. And this laptop. I'm using is not slow it's an i7 so it's uh, it's a fairly quick laptop it's not the laptop that's causing things to be slow on oh, the connection obviously we're on ethernet so there you go it's just about finished I think that's it actually I don't think I'm sat here waiting for it to give a finished message and I don't think it does it just says 100% so that's that I should have on the desktop there the icon for sim CNC so basically when this loads up you've got to create a bit like Mac you've got to create a profile so we'll just call it test create no and it puts it in a little box there double click right once you've done that it shows the controller now I've done this a couple of times now because I've screwed this video up <laughs> so I've uninstalled and reinstalled it and I've on a couple of occasions when I've installed it when the first time it starts this box doesn't show well the box appears but the details, this controller that's in it, doesn't appear, it doesn't show you in controller. So what you have to do is shut the software down and restart it. Uh, it's a little bit of a knit and miss affair, so well, that's obviously a bug, I imagine, which I'll be telling them about. Uh, so once you've done that, this is where you'll get your details for your license file, because when you download it, you've got to create... You've got to give them your serial number in your Mac code of your controller. Now, you can't find it, unless you probably not know it, so the only way to find it is to install the software and do this uh, to get the details, and then send them them those them details, and they'll send you a license file back. So, uh, I'm going to click OK now, and when I do, I'm just going to get a message complaining at me because I've got no license file so basically I've got no license file in it so it's it's not connected to controller and that's it really at the minute that's as far as I can go because I haven't got that license file yet uh, so all I can do is show you the screen so this is the screen it's a bit bland at the minute I'm sure well I'm hoping they're gonna work on it and improve it because it's not the best but I'll run through what what's here at the minute and show you. Uh, a lot of it's obviously blanked out because I can't do anything like the reset that's there. It won't let me reset. If I try to reset, I just get a message telling me there's no device. So there's nothing I can really do other than show you around it. We've got some jog keys at this side. Again, these are blanked out, I think, because the control was not talking to it can't do much with it so we've got your jogs you can continuous and step mode uh, little
button there, I think, obviously key control, so you can use your keyboard, I think. And then you've got your overrides, feed rate, overridden, current speed, and you've got your spindle. This bit there that says sensor, I'm not sure what that is. It might be the angle, if you've got an encoder on your spindle, like you've got an ATC, it might show you the angle of the spindle. I'm not sure about that. So, anyway. You've got the bar across the bottom. You've got a few buttons, miss, flood. And you've got your spindle, directions, rewind, pause, which is like feed hold, stop, and then you've got run, and then reverse run. Uh, obviously we've got an MDI, some Python controls there, it uses Python scripts, so obviously we've got a little window there, but looks of it showing you what Python's doing, this must be a G-code screen, we've got a button there for tool table, so we'll click on that and have a look, and then we show you tool table, so you've got your, your various op offsets for your tools, your tool length, diameter, error, so that's that screen, and obviously there we've got tool number, your offsets, your diameters, your information, conflict to machine coordinates, or work coordinates with that button, then you've got your axis DROs across the top, uh, Wait, it uses tabs. Like I said, this screen I think needs improving. I'm not over keen on it. But also, I've got a 3D toolpath window. I can't see any way to flip to 2D, but that's what these buttons up here might be. I'm not sure, but it'd be nice to have it 2D. Not always keen on 3D toolpaths. Then we've got an offset tab, which it looks like this is where you'll go set your. You zero out the axis and ref all axis. Uh, you can apply any offsets that's your G54s, fives, and all that. So that's that. Uh, to be honest, I've not seen any homing, homing buttons yet, but I'm sure they'll appear. Then we've got a diagnostics tab. Oh, here we are. <laughs> said they'd appear. They blanked out a minute, can't do anything with them. Different configurations again, can't really do more thing. We're not talking to the controller, so that's about it. On there, uh, I'll go to your menus, open your files, settings. Right, you go to the settings thing again, it's all tab based, so there's loads of tabs across the top. You've got your general, so you've you've got your feed rate override speeds and things like that, jog speeds, continuous step mode, so that's your default, you can have it default to step if you like. Then you've got your jog increments, native units, debug file settings and stuff, emotion planet. Again you've got various things, you've got your look head. Your constant velocity angles, curve optimum precision, not sure, I believe that's probably to do with the new S-curve planner, like the mid sediment cycle stuff, I would imagine that's what that is, relates to, I mean, you've got, bottom you've got your tan, tangential axis enable, and your various angle settings and lift positions, then you've got special I.O., so, uh, looks like setting all your I.O. up for your emergency stop and for your power supply monitoring and stuff like that. Trajectory synced output, so you must be able to probably set your outputs up to do with your tra trajectory. Don't know, that's a new, that's a new one on me. Uh, next tab, it's got your feed rate override, so again... Various things you can have it do. I don't know at the minute so I can access them. Can't do anything with that. Axes, nothing in there because probably because we're not talking to the controller. 
we've got if we jog these across oh, one two four modules with the next one again nothing in there because we can't talk to the control and it won't show you modules that are attached and because we haven't got any attached it won't show them anyway spindle again you spin the IO so you set you'll set this up in there and tell it your maximum RPM and all that coolant the looks of it you've got your MPG settings so if you've got an MG MPG module on it this is where you do all your setting up torch height control Python actions like I say it's a Python based script system for make customizing it by the looks of it and this is where you'll set your actions up based on what you want it to do we'll start trajectory stop trajectory various options I would imagine they might increase as time goes on it looks like you can then next one is action buttons so you can set them scripts to work when a button gets pressed can't do anything in here again, it's blocked me out. And that's it. And the next one is view where you set up your it looks of it, your uh, your toolpath colours, stuff like that. And that's about it in there. I don't know if this help thing actually works. No it don't, I didn't think it would. Uh, that's about it. The, these things across the top, you've got buttons, a few buttons across the top. Ref all, tool probe. Uh, but I haven't seen any probe scripts or setups anywhere. Actions, these must be the action buttons. Maybe that's where you'd set your tool probes up. Again, I don't really know. Uh, configuration, so you've got settings which you've got a button from. Change profile, obviously you could click that, it's going to let you go in and change profile. I'm going to say no. This is where you'd set your license, so when you get your license file, you go in here, click to set license, opens a window up, you'd put your license file in, in one of these folders, go in, select your file, and then obviously you click on open but in this case it ain't gonna happen because we ain't got note there uh, set python path is blanked out won't let me do anything macro you've got a show script editor it looks like it's got a script editor built into it again a little bit like mac does um, again, don't know enough about that just at the minute. And we've got a diagnostic. So you'd show you basically your controller. This is a bit like the plugin I would, I think, like Mac had. So uh, again, nothing to see because we're not talking to the controller. We've got a debug console which basically just gives you messages to tell you what's happening and that's it L as usual crap that's it lads really that's as much as I know about it at the minute like I said as soon as I get it working on my machine and I get a license file and everything set up I report back to you and let you know how it is I can see it's still probably got a, a way to go. But it's a start, I suppose. Alright then, cheers.